Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Minecraft Disney World Q&A. It's the series in which you ask me questions regarding Disney and I give you answers regarding Disney, to the best of my abilities at least. Uh, this week I have a nice group of questions here. We're going to take a walk through Hollywood Studios and we are going to answer your questions. So let's just dive right in. First up, we have Dom Likes Anime who asks, Rob, do you think it was a good idea to make the magic bands available to everyone? Short answer, yes, absolutely. I don't think there's any inherent benefit to keeping it limited uh, to, or to keeping people away from it. So I do think it was a great thing. Uh, I think that's what it was designed for right off the bat. So I don't think there'd be a like scenario in which they wouldn't. You know, early on, it was sort of limited because they were testing it. Not because, you know, they didn't want people to use it. So, yeah, I think it's a great thing. Next up, we have Andrew Seibel, Siebel, who asks, If MC Magic could do one thing better, what would it be? Now, this was an interesting question. At first, I wasn't going to pick it because um, I'm not one to criticize, especially on something like this where, obviously, the talent here is just so above and beyond. I don't know why my internet must be bad. These chunks are loading slow. But their talent is above and beyond anything I can do in this game. So I'm not one to be like, oh, their trees are ugly, you know. Um, but at the same time, I think healthy criticism is always, or most importantly, uh, productive criticism or, or you know, um, Criticism that, that could go to the better of the server is always healthy to have. So I guess if I had to pick one thing that they could do better, it would be, I guess, like on a building scale, maybe just like the the outside terrain. Maybe that's not something that they could do better, but they could just put on their, their roadmap. I mean, it's obviously super low importance because... They want to get the rides out there in the parks and the water parks and all those other things that people think of when they think of Disney and when they come on the server and want to visit. However, I'm a weirdo. <laughs> As a weirdo, my most exciting part of something like this is the little details that make it really feel like you're actually at Disney. So, for instance, if I were to ever be a builder on MC Magic, not that I'm like planning on that or anything because I don't have building ability, I would want to work on the highways in between all the parks and the roads and the trees and just all that stuff in between that when you pull back you realize this is really a recreation of the whole property and not just the parks uh but beyond that everything they do is so fantastic that you know i'm not gonna stand here and go like oh their texture pack could be better no it's great i like it next up we have hayden kalinsky who asks hey rob i was wondering what do you think about the new fantasy land what do you like about it? What do you not like? Did you like the old Fantasyland better? Thanks and have a magical day. Well, you too. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have good answers for that because I haven't been to New Fantasyland yet. It has unfortunately been, uh, it was 2012 when I was last to Disney World. And at that point, the park hadn't opened anything at all. So I had only seen, you know, things under construction. So I can't really speak from experience. You know, I'm really excited to try Be Our Guest. That sounds like a beautiful restaurant. You know, the rides sound exciting. If there's any criticism I'd have for it, it's just for the fact that, you know, I'm very future forward and love the idea of futurism in these parks. So, like, the fantasy land aspect isn't as appealing to me. There goes by. We're going to head back through the queue. Walk on here. Um, but I, I guess I'll have to give you a report. I would love to go to Disney this year. I'm hoping maybe this fall I could swing a trip and, uh, then I'll be able to make some videos there and give you some, uh, firsthand accounts of what I think. Next up, we have Max Ray, who says there are plans for King Kong Land and Universal Islands of Adventure. How will this impact Disney World in general? Um, if that's true, they're going to make a whole land. I think, honestly, it probably can only benefit Disney. The way I see it, if somebody's a hardcore Disney fan, they're not going to be swayed by, you know, King Kong Land. If somebody's not going to Disney or not planning to go to Disney, then they're not going to go, regardless of whether or not there's a King Kong Land. You know, the only people this is going to affect is maybe, you know, the inclusion of a King Kong Land would swing people who 
come down to Florida to do both Universal and Disney, maybe they'll spend an extra day at Universal that they otherwise would have spent at Disney. Um, but I, I would imagine that that cross-section is so low that it's not really going to affect Disney's bottom line at all. If anything, it might help them. You know, there might be families out there who weren't planning to go on vacation, but hey, Universal has this new thing. Let's go down and check it out. And while we're down there, let's go to Disney for a couple of days or a day. You know, and then at that point, it's benefiting Disney. So I think you have that balancing each other out. And I think uh, overall, it's not going to be a huge deal. And it also, it is beneficial for us as consumers because it might keep them on their toes enough to go, well, we need something new now. And now if you're a fan of theme parks, you're getting two new things. And that's why competition, healthy competition especially, is always beneficial for the uh, end user. Uh, next up, we have Braden Burbeek. Burback? I am horrible at pronouncing last names. Sorry. Um, hey, Rob, my family and I are going to Walt Disney World uh, in early June. Is it crowded as as crowded as the middle of the summer, or is it less crowded? Thanks for your time, and have a magical day. Well, thanks, thanks everyone, for giving me these magical day wishes. Uh, June's going to be crowded. Not going to, you know, not going to, not going to, you know, Mickey Mouse that one for you. It's going to be crowded. It's the summer. It's their peak season. Um, will it be as crowded as, like, July? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I think at that point, it's possible. There are sites that have crowd calendars that really go into, like, extreme detail about this. But I would wager that it would be as much so because at that point, everybody's in full vacation mode if you're younger. Like, I know in certain parts of the country you get out and you start school at different times, but I'd say by June safely everybody's on vacation. So my guess would be if it's going to be crowded in June, it will be in July and, and even parts of August. That said, Disney does account for that. You know, um, one thing they do during the peak season is they extend their hours. Uh, and likewise, on off-peak season, they shorten their hours. So, you know, you'll have more time to go do things. Uh, and especially when you're younger, it's less of a concern. You know, when I was younger, I loved going during the summer because I remember the parks being open, you know, way early in the morning and then, you know, being open until 11 o'clock, midnight, times like that. And I could do it. I could power through and do 12 hours of Disney World uh, because I was young and spry and full of energy. Today... By like 10 o'clock, I'm ready to pass out and fall asleep. So now I sort of enjoy the off season more because even though the parks will close at say 8 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock, you know, you're losing hours there, but at the same time, you're not waiting in line as much. Uh, today, more than ever, you know, waiting in line isn't as big of a deal. Yeah, there are crowds, but you have interactive queues, you have smartphones, you have all these things to keep you, you know, distracted company with whoever you're with. Um, you know, maybe 10 years ago, you didn't have some of those things and you just had to, you know, deal with it. Uh, so yeah, you're going to see crowds, but it's not a huge deal. Disney is one of those things where, you know, even if you're not planning with the ideal trip in mind, you're still going to have fun because it's Disney World. Like, it's hard to not have fun. You have to actively try to not have a good time at Disney. Uh, next up, we have Disney World Genius, who asks... Why are you asking anything? You're a Disney World genius. I should be asking you questions. I love this restaurant, by the way. The food is, like, totally unremarkable, or not really special, but the theme is just oh, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. I always eat here when I come. It's the uh, sci-fi dine-in drive-in. Uh, drive uh, sci-fi? What is it? How am I forgetting the name of it? Sci-fi dine-in theater or drive-in theater? One of the two. Clearly, I'm forgetting. Uh, clearly, I have to go back for another trip. That's the only solution. Anyway, Disney World Genius asks, do you like the idea of Star Wars Land? It will not be in Disneyland, but in Walt Disney World in the Echo Lake area of Hollywood Studios. So Disney hasn't officially announced any plans to build any sort of Star Wars Land. So that's totally rumor at this point. Um, so, you know, if it were to be built, would it be built in Hollywood Studios? My guess would be yes. They would already have a Star Wars ride here. Uh, Echo Lake seems like a good idea because you've got, you know, a lot of space due to the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular or the lake itself. Uh, it's called Echo Lake. Like, talk about, you know, Echo Echo Base, you know, uh, for the second Star Wars film. Um, 
but it's not fact yet. What would I think of it? I'd love it. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I can't wait for these new movies. So I'm very psyched for this. If they were to make it, I would I would dig it so much. Um, and Hollywood Studios would be a good fit for it. Anyway, our next question. Ooh, secret parkour. Woo! Now everybody knows about it. Um, comes from Ice Icy Rex who asks, Hey Rob, I was just wondering, when you're recording a video of an attraction, do you incorporate the music for that attraction into the video, or does it actually play in the Minecraft server? For example, in Space Mountain, you can hear the Star Tunnel music play as you're heading from the entrance to the actual ride. So, this is a little inside baseball question, but I'm totally happy to answer it. Uh, for all of my videos, I manually insert the music after the fact of recording. Now, the cool thing is... That is becoming a little less necessary. In fact, at the beginning of this episode, the music you hear wasn't inserted by me. That is now due to the fact that MC Magic, like a texture pack, has a sound pack, which is just, you know, a layered resource pack, and they can include sounds of parks and rides and, you know, ambience and things like that. Um, for instance, they've got Ant Venom doing the voice for um, the tour guide in Kilimanjaro. Or they've got some other ride music, things like that. So, um, you know, it it's getting to the point where I think you don't need to have that music layered in after the fact. However, because I'm, you know, a video editor, that's just sort of what I plan to do. See, oh, for instance, this music. This music's all within the texture pack, which is great. Um, because the first thing I did when I came on the server was I went to... Uh, my collection of Disney music and I started playing background music while I walked around to just get me into the mood And now you don't really have to do that You could just do that through the server Which is just like one of those minor things that you might not think, you know, to do But MC Magic thought to do it uh, Next question Comes from Nat Nat Dancer 83001 Who asks, what are your opinions on Frozen? Are they making a Broadway show for it? Do you feel they're making too much of a deal of this movie? I personally didn't like Frozen. Uh, that's what Nat said. That's not what I said. Uh, thanks for the question, Nat. Um, I really enjoyed Frozen. I went into it actually looking to not... I shouldn't say looking to not enjoy it. I wasn't hoping to dis like not enjoy it. I just was planning to because you know I had seen Tangled and it was okay, but it didn't really win me over... Um, and I guess just the new era of films don't grab me the same way the, the 90s era and the classical era Disney did. Uh, but I watched it and totally loved it. And so uh, I'm going to have to disagree and say I really liked Frozen. Are they making a Broadway show for it? I don't know if one's announced or not, but I would bet my money that they're going to. It, they're milking this cash cow. And, you know, as a company, a pr public company, they're sort of obligated to to an extent you know they're supposed to be making a profit for their shareholders and you know when you have a hit like this an undisputed hit like frozen you're gonna have to do a lot and uh there might be some frozen fatigue my only hope is that if they do a, a sequel they give it the proper time that it needs to be created and that it's good and we can only wait and hope uh our next question comes from okc max who asks what is your favorite Disney movie from your childhood? How fitting. <laughs> Great job on the series. Thanks, Max. Uh, my favorite from childhood. Here's the thing. My current favorite Disney movie is Aladdin. By the way, I love this restaurant. The 50s Primetime Cafe. This is a um, 50s style made to be like you're eating in, you know, mom's dinner in the 1950s. And they all have TVs playing old 50s shows like I Love Lucy. And uh, all of the meals are like old school 50s dinners like meatloaf and, you know, with mixed greens and things like that. So cool place. All of the all of the waitresses act like like your mom, you know, like they they'll they'll get they'll get snarky with you. Like I, I remember getting getting lip from like uh, my waitress mom for or not eating all of my green beans and told me I had to eat all my green beans. And I guess if you're younger, you might not like that or you might, you know, not buy into it. But like when you're older, it's just like really fun. It's a fun experience. Anyway, back to your question. As a kid, I think my favorite movie, I really loved, I love so many different movies. I don't know if I had a favorite. 
for instance, I had like my favorite home video Disney movie was probably a Goofy movie because Goofy was one of my favorite characters. Um, I love Disney Channel original movies back then, Xenon and, you know, uh, they basically would do a made for TV movie of the month, uh, Brink, things like that. I love those movies. As far as animated films, um, man, I really dug, for some reason, I, I really dug Cinderella. I think the art style, that Sleeping Beauty had a fantastic art style. I think when I was younger, the aesthetics really, um, won me over. So I have a bunch of favorites. I want to know from everybody watching now, leave it, leave it in the comments, what's your favorite Disney movie? Whether it's new, old, doesn't matter. Whatever your favorite is, it's your favorite, and it's totally justified. And finally this week, our last question, and I really like this question. By the way, you want, you want, a, you want, a, you want a tip? Um, when I'm picking questions, I try to pick the ones that basically would have a lot of discussion. I'll occasionally pick really short, quick, easy ones like that one, what's your favorite movie? But the ones that really make me think are the ones that I really like and usually read out. And I think anything with the word Eisner in it, I'll probably end up liking and picking just because that sounds like a question that's coming from like a Disney business perspective or like really thinking critically about Disney as a whole than just, you know, like what's a favorite ride. Uh, but OK, Random List asks, asks uh, do you think parks and attractions built during the Eisner era of Disney lost some quality compared to the ones built prior? That's an interesting question because you have to wonder what's the measure of quality. Are you talking about quality in terms of how good the ride is as a story or how good it is technically, how good it is um, in terms of drawing a crowd? Um, you know, I think different answers will have different answers. Um, Eisner had a very different mentality of how to run the Walt Disney Company than how it was being run before he took over. You know, before Eisner stepped in, Disney was a small company. Believe it or not, a lot of people believe that Disney was always this big mega, you know, corporation just because Mickey was always popular. But Disney wasn't always, you know, they used to be in financial trouble and, you know, Eisner and Wells pulled them out of it. And part of doing that was treating it like a mega corporation. And, you know, that involved doing tie ins with movies and, you know, um, business you know, some might call them tricks, but, you know, they help the business out, um, raised prices, things like that. As far as attractions go, I don't think, I don't think their quality was hurt in terms of construction, in terms of, you know, the ride technicality. Uh, in fact, Eisner was very interested in the theme park aspect of the business because it was new to him and it was sort of novel and in fact if anything there was some criticism that he micromanaged a little too much when it came to Walt Disney Imagineering uh, but for a while he just sort of had free reign to let them have free reign to do what they want especially when it came time to do like uh, Euro Disney stuff like that um, in terms of quality of the rides I mean that's tough in terms of story like I think it's it's a hit, hit or miss I can't think of many bad attractions you know he he for for all the good and bad Eisner did you know you look at a list of attractions built under his tenure and there's some really good ones in there you know um whether it was geez now of course they're all like blanking I mean a lot of additions to Epcot came from Eisner um, although it was obviously built before his, his time at Disney started, but things like Soarin' Over California, that's an Eisner attraction. Um, I want to say they were finishing up Splash Mountain when he stepped in. I know he stepped in because he had a big part in the naming of Splash Mountain. So at some point he was involved, uh, you know, he had a lot of things like, um, what was it called? What's it called? The... Uh... I want to say Paradise Island. Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. Uh, it was like an island of nightclubs for adults. That was pretty cool. Although I was never old enough to go and then it ended up closing. Now I'm old enough to go and it doesn't exist anymore. You know, um, Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon. All of these hotels. I mean, a lot came from the Eisner era. And I think a lot of it was pretty high quality. 
if if there's any notable differences, I think af- going from the Eisner era to the Iger era, you lose a lot of originality. You know, uh, Body Wars, things like that was, these are original concepts. And I think Disney had a knack up until the Eisner, the, yeah, not until the Eisner era, the Iger era of being really original. You know, you think of some of the classic rides at Disney, Splash Mountain. Okay, that's based on a movie. That was a bad example. Space Mountain, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean. I mean, these are like classics that were completely original ideas. Spaceship Earth. Um, but if you look at Iger's era, I'm fairly certain, and I, nobody has contested this, and I keep throwing it out there because I hope somebody who might think of something that I've missed, but I don't think there's been a single attraction at Walt Disney World, or Disneyland for that matter, that was conceived and built during Iger's era. I think during his time there, everything's been based on a previously established IP. The one exam, ex, uh, exemption, and I think this is sort of an exception, is that um, Expedition Everest opened when Iger was in charge, but it was conceived and developed and started construction while Eisner was in charge. So he, he got the green light from Eisner, you know, Imagineering, uh, and then Iger was there when it finished. But since then, I don't think there's been an original attraction. And that's sort of a bummer to me. I mean, obviously, Iger's taking a very different stance of how to run the company. His stance is acquire quality content and use that. You know, they bought Marvel. They bought Star Wars. Who knows what else they're going to buy? They're doing Avatar Land. Um, And certainly the company's doing well, and that's proof that that is one way to run it. But I think there's something a little sad in that, you know, that doesn't leave a lot of room for completely original ideas. Uh, So, you know, it's... I don't think it's gone down. I think it's just changed, you know, and those are all trade-offs from the Walt era of Disneyland, right? And the initial stages of Disney World where, you know, it was a healthy mix. There were original ideas there. There were ideas based on IPs, um, but they were much smaller in scale and scope. And that's, I think, just a product of the times. Back then, theme parks were more novel and you could get away with a simpler attraction, whereas today... You know, you're competing with blockbuster films and video games and all these other experiences that, you know, you you need to up your game and have these, you know, crazy rides where I don't think you'll ever see something on the scale of, say, Peter Pan's flight. I don't think you'll ever see that again. Uh, Not on not on like a very popular level. So uh, that's just my two cents. If you have a different opinion, please feel free to leave it in the comments. I love hearing your comments. I love hearing your questions. I, try, I pick out enough for an episode, but I try to answer the others within the comments themselves. So if you have a question, anything Disney related, whether it's about the movies, the parks, the rides, the server, the anything, feel free to leave it below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm not going to do one of those YouTube things where they're like, please leave a like and, uh, you know, subscribe. Uh, you'll do that if you want to do that. That's all the way up to you. I would ask, if you enjoy the series, to share it with somebody else who might be into it. If you have a Disney fan who maybe might not be super into Minecraft, maybe show them, show them a link or two. You know, I, I've known a lot of people who have gotten into Minecraft through the server, and I know some people who have gotten into Disney from Minecraft through the server, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always great to sort of share that with people. Anyway, have a fantastic week. Whatever you're doing, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. Uh, and I hope to see you all here next time for the next episode of the Walt Disney World Q&A. Actually, that's not the name of the series. It's the Minecraft Disney World <laughs> Q&A. Bye, everybody.